What's up, Gabe Brewstream Cast Guy here, talking today about Ghost to Tsushima Director's Cut, because this is a game that I think a lot of us have been very, very curious about. Now, if you've been subscribed for a bit, I'm sure you remember this, but Ghost to Tsushima was actually my game of the year of 2020. Not only did I really enjoy the story and all the different lore, I went on to get every single trophy in it, find every objective, uncover every single hidden spot, because I loved this entire freaking game so freaking much, but I was most curious to see what this Director's Cut content was going to be like. This introduces a new island called Iki that has a bunch of new spots in it, new tournaments, new bosses, and honestly, some new lore that really adds to this universe. But is it worth the price? Keep in mind that this does cost $20 if you're trying to play this on the PlayStation 4, and $30 if you want the Director's Cut DLC PlayStation 5 upgrade. Now, I decided to get the PlayStation 5 upgrade, and uh, it's very good. This is an incredibly fun time. I really enjoy a lot of the new twists and turns we're getting, but it's definitely not perfect. There is actually one gigantic flaw that I want to talk about towards the end of this video. Let's start off with what's positive about this. Iki Island is a very different style of experience. You can tell that there is a more experienced craftsmanship to this. Now, the original Ghost of Tsushima was already a freaking masterpiece, but at times you could still feel the developers kind of figuring out how layouts should be, or sometimes even just the proper way to space out the random puzzle you stumble across. Whereas this, it has a very, very, very purposeful and really nicely done pace to everything in this. I do want to say that the director's cut is a bit shorter than I thought it was going to be. The new story chunks here take about three and a half to four hours to complete, and then there is like four hours of side quests. And if you're trying to get to every single collectible, it's about 10 total hours. So that basically breaks down to $30 for 10 hours of content. Now to me, it felt very, very worth the price. And part of it comes down to this newly introduced story chapters we're getting. It is incredibly well written. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I do want to talk a bit about what it is. Our hero, Jin Sakai, is originally motivated to come to Iki Island after discovering this raiding party of mysterious new mongrel forces that have this really bright purple armor, and they just basically say that there is this person called the Eagle that's going to try and take over the gigantic mainland of Tsushima. Now, these people are especially dangerous because it seems like they have some sorts of special abilities that the standard people don't have, and most of this comes down to the new unit called shamans. Now, everybody you've already fought before, from shieldsmen to spear attackers to the bowmen you've been taking down on the main island of Tsushima, those people are back. You're going to be fighting everything that's already existed, but this new character that randomly shows up are called shamans. These are attacking forces that, instead of just bashing your brains out in a typical fashion, they're able to chant and essentially buff all of the other attackers. Their songs motivate people to fight fight harder to not be staggered as easily. So a lot of times in these big sloppy group fights, you have to try and single out and find the shaman and kill them as fast as possible because they really do make the entire enemy force around them a lot more deadly. Now I say this as somebody that has every single unlockable in the game. I've got max stats, I've got every single ability, I've got the best armor in the game and of course the best swords and stuff. Even still, these shamans, when they're actually powering up their buddies, it becomes a force to be reckoned with. Now, I think that's pretty cool, but the part of this I enjoyed more is the fact that the idea of the eagle, she is a very, very well-written villain. While this fresh piece of story is relatively short, I like the idea that one of the things the eagle does is she poisons you. She gives you these, like, sets of hallucinations, and so throughout it, you'll hear the eagle's voice, and it gives you a chance to sort of explore the trauma of Jin, the, the past, the things he's had to go through to 
to become the Ghost of Tsushima in the first place. And really, the voice acting is top-notch. It is a very interesting exploration of the character of Jin himself. And in my opinion, it does kind of, in a way, it sort of sets up what may eventually become Ghost of Tsushima 2, because I do feel like they're trying to more emphasize his traumas, his past, and him as a hero in this very, very chaotic war. Now, I want to talk a bit more about some of the side quests, because this is the stuff I definitely enjoyed the most in the original Ghost of Tsushima main game. I loved all the side activities, all the different legends, the hidden stuff. And this time around, I want to just show you one specifically. At one point, you discover this legend, this tale of a dark cave. And by using your fire arrows, you light a series of trails. And at the back, you find this blind pirate lord who wants to duel you to the death. It is incredibly intense. It is incredibly gorgeous. And honestly, it feels like the most intense, insane samurai film of all time. This entire event, which is only a single of the side quests, feels incredibly good. It feels incredibly rewarding, and it emphasizes why I like Iki Island as a piece of downloadable content. This definitely requires more like innate ability than some of the side quests, which were complete jokes on the main island of Ghost of Tsushima. But another thing they've added in here that I want to talk about is the dueling tournament. So when you're in the main city, there is this special little like arena you can enter now this is totally optional it is not mandatory but it is a dueling tournament and it is surprisingly technical essentially the way this works is that it focuses like a boken tournament which you may not know what that means but it's basically wooden samurai swords basically the way this works is that every time you hit somebody you get a point first person to five points wins but the reason i like this is that you have to be very very careful whenever somebody gets hit you both take a step back which means that you cannot just wildly flail and tap them five times. You have to be very, very precise. You have to watch their motions, their placements, watching their feet to make sure you know when they're about to strike. And it feels like a very, very real duel, which is such a satisfying feeling when you actually win it. Now, I want to talk a bit about the flaws. The biggest one that really draws this back, I don't know why, the freaking voice acting is great. The writing is great, as I mentioned. Something about the animations this time around look like garbage. Specifically, inside of cutscenes, a lot of times, I can show you a whole montage here. Now, I'm purposely cutting off subtitles so you don't get any spoilers, but look how everybody just stands here. Their faces don't move very much. Their mouths kind of just flap like puppets. They don't use their hands very much while talking enthusiastically about taking over this crazy island, they kind of just stand there and go, Hello, it is I, ready to defeat these evil mongrel hordes. Why are they not emoting much with their bodies? And everybody just kind of stands there. Now, my logical brain just kind of assumes that this is just a side effect of the work-from-home process. This was completely made while all the developers were just stuck in their individual houses. So probably programming or even doing all the motion capture is much, much more difficult. Other than that, this has been an incredibly great experience. And I want to say that I really appreciate a lot of the details added to this PlayStation 5 version of it. Whenever you're using the triggers, these haptic feedback triggers feel incredibly good. Like, I thought it'd be a dumb gimmick, but whenever you feel the tauntness of your bow getting ready for a headshot, feeling that squeeze definitely does add to the experience. Or even things like when you're trying to swing on the rope, whenever you're getting out your grapple hook, you can feel the swing of that tension inside of the controller itself. They also do some little tiny things like whenever the shamans are singing, very subtly the songs will come out of the controller speaker and it sounds so realistic every time there's a little time where there's like a parry or a dodge sometimes you can also feel a tiny vibration like your character is shaking into the controller itself it is a very nice touch that really adds to an already great experience now the other thing is definitely just the graphics and lack of load times this game looks incredibly crisp but more than that i love fast travel. This is uncut. I'm not doing any jump cuts here. This is actually how fast it is to just teleport from literally the top of the island to the bottom of the island, literally seconds, less than one second to go from anywhere in the game to anywhere else. And that is still just mind-blowing that we're at a point where this technology really exists. 
I love everything about Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, and even more so now that this is a native PlayStation 5 game. It makes me excited for what eventually will become Ghost of Tsushima 2 someday, hopefully. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cuts DLC a 9 out of 10. If you're somebody that already enjoys the first base game of Ghost of Tsushima, this is definitely worth the price. It's another excuse to go back and experience this world and honestly to use all the abilities you've already unlocked on the mainland of Ghost of Tsushima. Director's Cut is a good extra taste of a world that we already loved. Thanks so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, press that subscribe button because it really does help me out, and of course, have the best day of all by keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.